You probably expect me to talk about how women are not represented in the STEM fields and how much we're failing the next generation of female students. When actually throughout the past few decades, we've seen and continue to see monumental breakthroughs in scientific contributions made by women. Women have designed aircrafts, developed the algorithm that captured the first ever image of a black hole and led the charge in developing COVID-19 vaccines. The number of women in STEM occupations increases each year. This includes women enrolled in STEM majors at universities and women, and women occupied in board roles and stationed in C-suite positions in STEM companies. This does not mean that we should abandon our efforts to encourage more women to pursue STEM professions, but rather it serves as a reminder of how hard women before us fought to bring us to where we are today. Now, there's still a lot of work to be done. My generation and I need to think of more creative ways to build on those efforts beyond just the typical STEM after school or summer programs. It's actually been shown that simply putting more girls into the pipeline does not solve the problem. They just seem to be leaking out at an even faster rate. For instance, having more girls attend such camps isn't the best and only way to showcase the impact of STEM fields. Instead, we need to target women at all levels. So that includes schools, universities, and workplaces. Today, I'm gonna to focus on workplaces. To know that women before us endured hardships and even lost their lives for us to be able to pursue careers in STEM makes it an even more important cause to continue to fight for. The hard question is how? How can we add to all of these tremendous efforts? What is next for us? Well, there are a number of things we can start with. Firstly, menstruation at the workplace. Now, with large, cor with large corporations switching to fully working from home and adopting the idea of digital workplace through the metaverse, women now more than ever should be allowed to work from home a few days per month during menstruation. Menstrual leave may benefit the health of individuals who experience mild, moderate, or severe discomfort from menstruation, and those who experience menstrual cycle related illnesses, such as dysmenorrhea, endometriosis, and mood disorders. For some women, menstrual symptoms may interrupt their daily lives, making it more difficult to participate in normal activities. I personally know women who fainted at an on-site field meeting due to the stabbing menstrual pain. So it's a serious matter that needs to be considered. In fact, there are a few large companies in India, namely Zomato, that offers their employees menstrual leave and in Australia, the Victorian Women's Trust offers their staff a menstrual policy that extends to employees in menopause, making it the first of its kind. There is a cross-sectional study with 762 participants reported that 72% of women believed that dysmenorrhea was a normal part of women's life and on average reported that their menstrual symptoms moderately affected their daily lives. Secondly, quiet rooms. You know, with the great resignation that came with the pandemic, corporations are struggling to attract new talent and retain current ones. So I was recently asked, as a woman who is a recent engineering graduate, what do I look for in a company? You see, as a practicing Muslim woman, one of the most important things I look for at a workplace is a quiet room to pray in. Frankly, anyone can use a quiet space to recharge. For all the introverts out there, I got you. Just like some large modern corporations have hammocks and nap pods, a quiet room isn't out of reach. I mean, if I plan to spend most of my day at the workplace, then I need to be able to pray my daily prayers. After all, we do spend one third of our lives working. This is critical, especially when spiritually and mentally, it means a great deal to me and my fellow Muslim employees. It really is a difference between a good and a bad day. And according to the Mental Health Foundation in the UK, 
workplaces with high levels of mental well-being are statistically more productive. So it's a win-win. Here are some pictures I got off of LinkedIn where people shared their quiet rooms or multi or multi-faith centers in their workplaces. To the left is the one from Facebook or now Meta offices in Dublin and the photo on the right is a local accountancy firm in the UK. Thirdly, personal protective equipment or PBE for short. Employers need to provide specialized women PBE that actually fits. In several cases, it has been clear that PBE for women isn't really designed for women, but instead it's just a smaller size of the men's PBE. It has been found in numerous cases that women require different PBE due to different anatomy than men. This leads to potential health issues in the future due to poor fit. There are several cases of this happening for different kinds of PBE as well. So PBE used in hospitals, construction sites, and so on. It was reported by the Trades Union Congress, or TUC, that when women found the PBE uncomfortable or coming in the way of doing their job, they were likely to not use the PBE altogether. This puts women at a greater risk of injury and health effects in the long term. These are only a few things we could start advocating for in the workplace. There are of course many more things we as a society can do to encourage women to pursue and stay in STEM fields. Because I believe that truly then we'll be able to solve the world's most complex problems. Thank you.